Hey guys, Budcat7 here. Okay, it is Sunday, May 12, 2019, and I want to thank you for visiting the Stonewall Research Channel here on YouTube. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And if you would kindly hit the like button, guys, that would be great. Okay, guys, well, I have a very interesting site in Peru to talk to you about. It's a little talked about site. It's not that it's not a known site. It is a known site, but, you know, not really talked about. It sort of lacks the grandeur of, you know, the main sites that everybody knows about, like KOT Wakan that I did a video um, a couple days ago about. And, um, you know, it's just, I think there's a reason why it's also not talked about very much is because there's some inexplicable stuff there and some stuff, I guess, that, you know, maybe people are getting a hint as to what's going on, but it's basically one of these, you know, megalithic stone sites in Peru, but in a different style than you're familiar with, with like Pumapunku and, you know, those type of places. Okay, Sescawama, you know, it's it's not that. It's it's more like into like the video I showed about the site just south of Mexico, uh, Chitzlaman model or something like that, and um, with these megalithic, you know, stone cut blocks that belong to this megalithic civilization that they claim was one of the oldest. We have so many, you know, I've gone over so many sites already and researched so many sites that claim to have been the oldest in the Americas and, you know, it's just totally confused at this point. I don't think they know which one is the oldest site in the Americas. But anyway, before we talk about this site in Peru that you probably never heard about, Chevan de Huantar. Let's just take a peek at this because I noticed this article here. You thought it was only happening in Belize, in Guatemala, in Mexico. Well, it's happening in Peru too, guys. Hate to tell you and bring you the bad news, but they're busy doing this all over the place. These are the ones that we know about, and I'm sure there's plenty that we don't know about, okay? Here's the place before. It was a pyramid at one of the oldest sites, an important site in uh, in Peru. And that's what it looked like. Right? And here what it looks like now. Thanks to the um, construction company that went in there and bulldozed the place. So it says here, El Paraiso was one of the oldest structures in the Americas. I'll just read this quick article before we get to um, Chavan de Huantar. Okay, it's a quick article, so just bear with me here. I'm sure you're going to want to hear about it. So this happened not shortly after the one in Belize that I did the video on. A 5,000-year-old pyramid in Lima, Peru has been torn down by two private construction companies. The El Paraiso Pyramid, located in the San Martin de Porres, was one of 12 such structures spread over a 64-hectare area, making up one of the America's oldest archaeological sites. Archaeologist Marco Buellen Hugo, who is in charge of the research and excavation of the site, told the El Comercio newspaper that he had reason to believe that the Campania y Promotora Provalance, EIRL, and Alisol SAC Ambas were the private companies behind the destruction. And who knows, these may be the very same companies that are doing this stuff in Belize, too. Bulldozing Mayan pyramids. You know, Peruvian, who cares? They don't care. This is the reptilian race that we live with here on planet Earth. Who are, you know, committing crimes against humanity. They don't have any right to breathe the same air as, you know, decent, real people do. Quote, this isn't the first time they've tried to take over this land, unquote. He said, quote, they say they are the owners, even though this land is untouchable, unquote. So the land's owned by the state. 
But, you know, these companies go in there and do whatever they want. Uh. According to the Ministry of Culture, the companies have previously laid claim to the land, but it's actually under state control. It's under state control, but it's not fenced off, it's not blocked off, just people, anybody can go there and do whatever they want. Archaeologist Frederick Andrews said that the pyramid may have held between 1,500 and 3,000 inhabitants with over 100,000 tons of rock used in its construction, taken from the hills in the surrounding area. It was likely used for religious and ritual purposes. It is believed that it was inhabited by the late pre-ceramic age, 2,000 to 3,000 B.C., according to the Apolloni timeline. Okay, so I just wanted to give you that happy news there. As you can see, to just, you know... Whatever they want to do is going on. Look, if the site is, you know, real nice and it's got a lot of fancy stuff, you know, hey, you could say. But if it's not so fancy and they don't know a lot about it or whatever, hey, just, you know, bulldoze the thing. We need to make, you know, McMansion developments over here for all the uh, unconscious dimwits who want to buy, you know, crappy houses in McMansion land. Okay, so bad news, guys. It's just, it's happening everywhere, so, you know, unless somebody there gets upset about it enough to do something about it, it's just going to continue going on, you know, as long as these reptiles have control, or whoever the hell they are, non-human entities. Okay, so let's talk about the site, Chavin de Huantar, because it's a very interesting site, and what said at the end of the article had been something I've been discussing with Andrew at Ancient History Criticisms and Phil at the Ancient Alternative View. And um, I have been, you know, I had mentioned to these guys a couple of times that, you know, some of their research to me shows that there was this sort of, you know, worldwide building standard that they were going by, you know, at least at its, you know, principal level. And then the stylization can happen after that in many different ways, but it's the principal building techniques, the way stones were cut and shaped, etc., seem to be in a lot of places in the world with similar types of building style, construction, etc. So it made me wonder if there wasn't some sort of um, worldwide um, standard building codes that were circulating among the peoples around the whole world. But um, in any case, let me get to this because it's an interesting site and I think they have it wrong. You know, they attribute it to these one peoples, okay? And uh, let me show you some pictures of what the site looks like here a little bit. Okay, can't see much. That's a real far away picture. But here's like the front of the temple here at the site. And as you can see in the front of it, you have these incredible um, megalithic stone here that seem to be more precision cut. And then you have a sort of interim part in here with maybe some finer work done here and some very bad repair work here and there to the site and some other interesting stuff. So this is like a, you know, street view of the site of, of Chavan de Fontar and you probably never saw it before, but this is what it looks like. Right, and like down in this area here, we'll take a better look at it later. But there's these like sort of perfectly cut and fitted blocks, and then this sort of you know standard like you know Incan style you know repair work in there, and then these scattered perfectly cut stones in there like the facade of this thing and I think they got it all wrong because either the people got dumber as they if it's the same people they got dumber as time went on 
but you know eventually just nobody knew how to do this kind of work anymore I guess at some point All right some circular you know cylindrical column work there some very precisely cut stones and huge absolutely huge these are huge these are gigantic okay and here we can see more of this here. Okay. There's some more of the site there. I want to get to a particular one now. If I can. A particular street here. Okay, so here you see that sort of large area in the front courtyard area there and you see these you know very nicely done you know perfectly cut blocks of stone and even the ones that are underneath are similar to the style of the main building but more finely cut and this could be a softer stone as well so but most of it is granite Okay, we're going to read about it right now and talk about it a bit. <clears throat> okay, so like I said, you know, it lacks the sort of grandeur of Teotihuacan and all these other main sites. And, you know, this is one of the reasons they invent all kinds of, you know, rationalizations of why it doesn't matter. But this one's in like the middle of a mountainous region still so but even so you see what goes on there in Peru, Peru this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site maybe that's what's got to happen before they leave me alone you know leave the site alone I don't know but okay so let's read the Wikipedia article is good enough seems and they say some interesting things in here and just things that don't make sense but let's see what they say <coughs> Excuse me. Chavin de Huantar is an archaeological site in Peru containing ruins and artifacts constructed beginning at least, you know, remember, pay attention to this language that they use here, guys, to show about what they know, quote unquote, know. All right? What really archaeologists can see, that, and it's this third group of people who read say, yeah, they know everything. And they have everything down, proof positive, and they don't. Because this third set of people are very simple-minded. Okay. <clears throat> we know and they know that this, you know, they're theorizing. 90% of what they do is theorizing. It's very hypothetical. Because they just don't know. And can't know. Nobody can. All right, so constructed beginning at least by 1200 BCE and occupied by later cultures until around 400 to 500 BCE by the Shaban. So they're attributing most, you know, the beginnings of this site with these people called the Shaban. Okay, Shaban de Huantar, right? Okay, major pre-Inca culture. All right, but... I think they got that wrong. I think the Shaban were the ones that showed up after this other culture was here that was able to cut these stone precisely into, you know, precise geometric forms, unlike the later cultures there. But there was an interim culture, which is sort of like what's going on, what Brian Foster shows in the part, you know, please like, Puma Pungu and Sespuama and all the places where you see this sort of intermediate thing going on. I think that's what's going on here. And they don't actually know who the original people were there before the Shaban. And they don't think anybody else has been there before the Shaban. But I think they're making a mistake because of that megalithic, precisely cut stone block. And they add different elements of construction. <clears throat> the site is located in the Ancash region, 250 kilometers, 160 miles north of Lima, at an elevation of 3,180 meters, east of the Cordillera Blanca at the start of the Chucos Valley. 
Chavin de Huantar has been designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Some of the Chavin relics from this archaeological site are on display in the Museo de la Nación in Lima and the Museo Nacional de Chavin in Chavin itself. Occupied at Chavin de Huantar, occupation at Chavin de Huantar has been carbon dated to at least to at least 3000 BC with a margin of error that they're not telling you about. And who knows, they're based, all of these timelines are based on our current timeline, which is not to be sure. Okay? So, who knows? And they're, they're you know, it's the new world, so everything has to be dated newer. You know. They have that sort of, you know, built-in, preconceived, you know, learned like Pavlov's dog, the perception of the past. With ceremonial center activity occurring primarily toward the end of the second millennium and through the middle of the first millennium BC, while the fairly large population was based on an agricultural economy, the city's location at the headwaters of the Maranon River between the coast and the jungle made it an ideal location for the dissemination and collection of both ideas and material goods. This archaeological site is a large ceremonial center that has revealed a great deal about the Chavan culture. Chavan de Huantar served as a gathering place for people of the region to come together and worship, by according to somebody's research, okay, so they could be, you know, extrapolating that and hypothetically going by what later culture was and, you know, projecting that into the past because they assume that only one peoples have been here since the very beginning and I don't, I don't think that's true anywhere in any, the Americas anywhere. Chavin de Huantar served as a gathering place for people of the region to come together. The transformation of the center into a valley-dominating monument had a complex effect. It became a pan-regional place of importance. People went to Chavin de Huantar as a center to attend and participate in rituals, consult an oracle, or enter a cult. Okay, based on somebody else's research. See the little two there? Okay, here's where it's located, up here somewhere, showing the elevation. That's all. So it's, you know, it's in the mountainous region, put it that way. Okay. Findings of Chevron de Huantar indicate that social instability and upheaval began to occur between 500 and 300 BC. Okay, so began around that time. At the same time that the larger Chevron civilization began to decline, large ceremonial sites were abandoned, some unfinished. Get that again. Some unfinished. I'm telling you, every single one of these civilizations, you'll you'll read it. I, I don't know how many times I've already read to you guys over and over and over again. Like from every site on this planet, there's always this unfinished business going on. And I find that difficult to believe because most people who start things, especially things as difficult as what these people are doing, have a tendency to finish it. What happened? You know, always something that possibly that could be abruptly going on and what was it worldwide cataclysm what you know something but they never mention that in any of these things or correlate that or put it together i don't know why but it, it seems stupid Not, you know that we see this over and over again <coughs> and we were replaced by villages in agricultural land at chavan de huantar no later than 500 bc a small village replaced the circular plaza so even as early as that, you know, this culture had long gone, but, you know, saying it started the decline at 500 BCE, and a small village replaced the circular plaza. Evidently, other people moved in there. The plaza was occupied by a succession of cultural groups, and residents salvaged building stones and stone carvings to use in house walls. Mm-hmm. 
Multiple occupation floors indicate the village was continuously occupied through the 1940s. So this site has been occupied for like, you know, 5,000 years, 6,000 years, 8,000, 10,000. Who the heck knows how many years the site has been occupied? How are you going to make sense out of anything? It's like next to impossible. It's the problem with a lot of these sites. Site description. The Shavan civilization was centered on the site of Shavan Dui Huantar, the religious center of the Shavan people and the capital of the Shavan culture. The temple is a massive flat top pyramid surrounded by lower platforms, okay, like the temple pyramids in the Americas. That's why they call them the temple pyramids, because they're called temples here, temple pyramids. Just like it says right here, the temple is a massive flat top pyramid, just like the ones in America. That's why they believe there's a similarity between South American cultures and the Temple Mound builders. It is a U-shaped plaza with a sunken circular court in the center. The inside of the temple walls are decorated with sculptures and carvings. Shaba and Bihuantar was constructed over many stages starting prior to 1200 BCE. Okay, now, you know, they seem rather certain of that. With most major construction over by 750 BCE. The site continued in use as a ceremonial center until 500 BCE, but prior to 400 BCE, its primary religious function had ceased, and the site was occupied by casual residents of the highly distinct cultural tradition, Huaraz. So the latest ones they can figure out, because they got the artifacts from them, and people living at the top of all of these layers. <coughs> you know, the easy stuff to figure out. During its heyday, Shaman de Huantar was used as a religious center for the ceremonies and events, perhaps a home for an oracle, so perhaps a home for an oracle, perhaps. The site contains a number of major structures, including temples A, B, C, and D, and areas and buildings designated as the major plaza, the circular plaza, the old temple, and new temple, although the latter two designations are no longer accurate in light of recent research advances, so they mixed that up. What they thought was the new temple was really the old temple, and the old temple was the new temple. You see, guys, you see what's going on here, all right? You know, at some point, they got to be like, oh, wait a second, we can't say that, because, you know, people with eyes in their head can see. And, you know, that's the problem. The quote-unquote circular plaza appears to have been a sacred and ritually important open-air space with a ceremonial center. Prior to 8 to 700 BCE, this location had a number of functions, including serving as an atrium for entering Temple A through, temple's north, through the Temple's North Staircase. The plaza in the Classic period, after 700 BCE, is bounded on three sides by major temples A, B, and C, and it seems to be that this plaza, this plaza itself, is built with, you know, stone cannibalized from either another construction or the construction was already partially there, similar to that that you see in Peru and Puma Pugu and all these other sites there where they seem to put things back together again, right? With these megalithic stones already there. Okay, it's, it seems like that's what they're saying. Okay. The plaza in the cloud is bounded on three sides by major temples A, B, and C. The plaza is perfectly circular and is close to 20 meters, 66 feet in diameter, with a floor consisted of pillow-shaped pavers of yellow diatomite. Okay, so they're like diatoms, okay? This is really super soft stuff. And it's kind of interesting that they made the floor out of this softer diatomite stone, okay? You know, just softer stone that you might have to stand on for a while, okay? It appears that the center line of black limestone blocks runs on its architectural east-west axis. Walls of the plaza were constructed of cut stone, principally granite, okay? Hard, hard granite at a time when people had no metal tools. Laid in courses of varying width. The two broadest courses were carved in arcs closest to the western staircase and in two pairs of terminal stones flanking the eastern staircase. Yeah, you know, most of the stone involved in this construction is, you know, 
fairly geometrical, although not perfectly polished on all sides and everything at this sort of interim culture that I'm talking about, but geometric enough and, you know, sort of, uh, you know, um, you know, evenly sort of done in, you know, even proportions with another, okay, but even that, for people who had no metal tools, you know, pretty hard to do even with stone tools, I would say, to get them that, you know, geometrically close. Okay, so principally granite laid in courses of varying width. The two broadest courses were carved in arcs closest to the western staircase and in two pairs of terminal stones flanking the eastern staircase. The quote-unquote old temple dating from the early site's history was an inward-facing structure composed primarily of passageways built around a circular courtyard. So, you know, think again, and you got it all wrong, it's not old. <clears throat> they don't know. The more advanced stuff that they're thinking is newer is really the older stuff, and that's why they come to this. <coughs> Conclusion of theirs. Excuse me. Okay. The structure contained obelisk and stone monuments with relief carvings depicting jaguars, caimans, and other forms with anthropomorphic features, okay? So I'm always curious about these things. Carving the picking jaguars and caimans, okay, we know what they are. It's clear enough. They could carve it and we could see what it is. And other forms with anthropomorphic features, well, why? I don't understand, you know. Just very strange. And what could they possibly be? They say anthropomorphic features, but that's about it. The Lanzon Gallery, located at the very center, contained a sculpture of the Lanzon, which is assumed to be a supreme deity of Chavon de Huantar. The figure is anthropomorphic, with a feline head and a human body. Mortar, pestles, conch shell, trumpets, and many other items have also been found. Many of these artifacts have an anthropomorphic design or decoration or are thought to be associated with Shaban rituals. The quote-unquote new temple, constructed between 500 and 200 BCE, Maloney, is also based on a gallery and plaza design and contains many relief sculptures. The Lanzon deity is also present, holding a strombus shell in the right hand, while the left hand holds a spondylus shell. Okay, so these seashell things, okay, very important and represent the spiral and everything else. And you see what the, you know, what the symbolism is of, of the shell and certain shells. Okay, so again, they say the lands on deities also present. Well, that might have been, you know, passed on to the later culture that they say is the old temple, but it's really the newer temple and, you know. See how this stuff can get very confusing, and, you know, probably intentionally so. The architectural design of Shaman Hawantar changed over time as an old temple development was added to, to with a new temple. Changes were more complex than in one stage of renovation. Smaller renovations happened consistently over the Shaman horizon, ending about 500 BCE when the new temple was completed. With the similar design of the old temple, Shaman de Huantar followed the U-shaped ceremonial center accompanied by sunken circular plaza. After the new temple was complete, Shaman de Huantar still embodied U-shaped ceremonial center design. The renovation enlarged the site considerably and added a larger sunken rectangular plaza with those megalithic square, you know, lighter stone block. The main objective of the renovation appears to be based on enabling more people to gather in one place as the site in general expanded. You know, it was occupied for thousands of years. Excavation of burial sites give, gave evidence of a small elite class whose tombs contained elaborate burial goods consisting of precious metals, colorful textiles, and other valuables. Most burials were simpler, with bodies interred in shallow pits with cotton clothing and a simple toolkit. Local style and art and decoration included scrolls, simple curves, straight lines, and images of wild animals. Shaven sculptures is usually a white granite and black limestone. Carved stone mortars and pestles, conch shell trumpets, bone tubes and spatulas, metal spatulas and spoons, metal spatulas and spoons were found decorated in shaman styles with various textiles including tapestry. Potter, pottery was found in a wide variety of forms, including bottles and bowls decorated with a wider range of distinctive elements. So let me just read to you quick down here because I'm running out of time here. Okay. 
if you want to read the article, I'll try to get it in there. Give me some time, guys. I'll get all this stuff in the description there, all the links and stuff. I do. It just takes me a little while. Beginning in 2004, Global Heritage Fund began conservation work at the UNESCO World Heritage Site. According to GHF, their work is involved stabilizing mass, doing all this kind of work. But listen to what it says down here real quick, guys, because this is what this video is all about, more or less, okay? John Rick of Stanford University has studied the site with laser scanning and attempted to determine whether it was, quote, planned by an elite or had resulted from some grassroots religious fervor, unquote, because details such as stair placement remain constant throughout the generations of builders. The site may be a very early example of the use of standardized building code, okay? You see that right there? Here's a guy from Stanford University who thinks the same thing I do, okay? Building standardization, okay? Building code, you know, types of construction, types of forms, okay? 